Ladies and gentlemen, welcome again, uh, once more again in our broadcasting. My name is Douglas Chilombo. Like always, we're going to share the Word of God. Here, yeah, as always, ladies and gentlemen, we make readings for the, from the Bible. We do not read one verses. We read the whole chapter, the, the whole chapter. We read the entire, the whole chapter, so that we can enhance the ability to understand more in our chapter because we we realize that the, the word of God does not necessarily require us to believe we need also to read reading the word of God it's one of the tools that will always want to get you back to your feet so ladies, ladies and gentlemen uh, good morning good afternoon uh, depending at the time and the hour we reach you and welcome to our broadcasting um, we always begin our small uh, predicate preaching by um, a prayer. So you and I, let's be together in one soul, one spirit, and let's praise our Lord, our God. Lord, we thank you because you are wonderful. You are so loving and a true father. You know to find weaknesses and strengthen those who are weak in your words and by your power. In thy name, we bless today's broadcasting and we bless everyone. Um, I bless everyone that's listening to this broadcasting. And I want this broadcasting to be a, such a wonderful thing. Wonderful thing for everyone that we're going to listen from today and over time so that this capsule may be your word as you end it over to us in your name, in the name of Jesus. So we bless and I bless all souls. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, we were in uh, Revelation chapter 5 in the last video. Today we're going to explore the chapter 6 in the Revelations. Uh, Revelation chapter uh, six, 6 chapters, we go up to 17 verses. 17 verses that we're going to read all together today. And we also going to explain every single details in these verses because the chapter six in the Revelation, chapter six, verses one to verses 17 speaks about the seals, the seals that the lamb is breaking now. The lamb is breaking the seals and is breaking the seals now. So this is the reading, brothers and sisters, this is the brothers. Chapter 6, I watch as the Lamb opened the first of the seven seals. Then I heard one of the four living creatures say in a voice like a thunder, Come. I looked, and there before me was a white horse. Its rider held a bow, and he was given a crown, and he rode out as a conqueror bent on conquest. When the lamb, the lamb opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature say, Come. Then another host came out, a fiery red one. Its rider was given a power to take peace from the earth and to make men slay each other. To him was given a large sword. When the lamb, the lamb opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, Come, I look, and there before me was a black horse. Its rider was holding a pair of scales in his hand. Then I heard what sounded like a voice among the four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat for day wages, and a three quarts of a barley for a day's wages and do not damage the oil and the wine. Verses 7. When the Lamb opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature say, Come. I looked, and there before me was a pale horse. Its rider was named Death, and Hades was following close behind him. 
they were given the power over the fourth of the earth to kill by sword, famine, and plague, and by the wild beasts of the earth. When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain because of the word of God and the testimony they had maintained. They called out in a loud voice, How long, sovereign Lord, holy and true, until you judge the inhabitant of the earth and avenge our blood? Then each of them was given a white robe, and they were told to wait a little longer until the number of their fellow servant and the brothers who were killed who were to be killed as they had been was completed. Twelve. I watch, and he opened the sixth seal. There was a great earthquake. The sun turned black like sackcloth made uh, of goat hair. The whole moon turned black, blood red, and the stars in the sky fell to earth as the late figs dropped from the fig tree when shaken by strong wind. The sky receded like a scroll rolling up, and even a mountain and island was removed from its place. Then the kings of the earth, the princes, the generals, the rich, the mighty, and every slave and every free man hid in caves among the rocks of the mountains. They called to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the first of whom who sit on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of the wrath, the wrath has come, and who can stand? Ladies and gentlemen, here we have witnessed the six seals that God had prepared for the revelation had been broken. When the first seal had been broken, the Bible tells us, I watched as the Lamb opened the first of the seven seals, then I heard one of the four living creatures saying in a voice like a thunder, Come. I looked, and there before me was a white horse. Its rider held a bar, and he was given a crown, and he rode out as a conqueror bent on conquest. Ladies and gentlemen, we were explaining in the last video how the Lamb received glory, power from the Lord God from being slain for our sin. The Lord Jesus is that Lamb. Let no one confuse you. Let nobody lie to you or let nobody tell you nonsense. The Lamb is the Lord Jesus who was crucified, killed, assassinated, so that you and I can today be bossy about God's power and love on us. And as he received glory, there were much to come, more to happen. And those events and authority couldn't just happen under the Lamb's authority. And the seals, we have to explain here, the seals, today we give the seals two meanings. First meaning for the seals, only the authority, a governor, a king, when he puts his seal, he testifies that this document is, is the authenticity. This document is real. This document is real. And the seals may also be for something that is hidden. You see, when you fold the envelope and you put the seal on top, you are sealing the message. You are making it confidential. So the scroll that the Lamb received had the two things that we can describe. First of all, he had the authority of God. And secondly, the authenticity of it was there. And these seals were to show what was hidden. What was hidden? 
every single time that the Lord God wanted to do something on earth, he sent out a messenger. He sent out prophets. He sends out word of God. He sends out to warn us about what will take place so that we can be prepared. Why? So that when he's going to harvest the souls, we can be a lot to be saved. We can be warned and change our attitude, ways, so that we can be saved. And the lamb received the seal, and the seal is the sign of authority, because in a chapter 5, we can see that the Lord God called out the entire universe, the heaven, the earth, under the water, under the earth, who is worthy to open the seal of God. Nobody was there. Only the lamb was there. And the Lamb, the Lord Jesus, by opening the first seal, we see that a white horse came out and he was given a bow. A bow is, you know, a bow is a weapon. A weapon way back in the days, we didn't have machine gun. Way back in the days, we had a bow, a spear, arrow, stuff like that. If somebody want to go to conquest, he want to go for war, for wages, for I want to have a piece of that. He has to get a ball, a machete, an axe, something like that. I'm not promoting those things, but I'm telling you the weapon that they were using way back in the days. See, the angel came out in a wire horse, which is white, and is holding a ball. He had been given authority to act. To act on who? To act on what? They say it's right they held a ball, and he was given a crown to be a king. And he rode out as a conqueror bent on conquest. Here we can see that his journey is ongoing. He did not stop. He didn't come return. His journey is ongoing. And this angel, we, we, we will, we, those who go in a conquest, those who goes on war and stuff like that, we will call upon God so this angel may be now our side. And if he's now our side, uh, maybe we will not going to be hurt because this one is going as a conqueror bent on conquest. We'll get back later on. When the lamb opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature saying, come, then another horse came out, a fiery red one. Its rider was given a power to take peace from the earth and to make men slay each other. To him was given a large sword. We see that the second horse come out and another angel took, rider, the rider took on it. He had the power to take life from the mankind and even confuse men so that they can slay one another. Why? I will explain. Those are not dedicated uh, people for God. Those are sinners. Those are those they stand, uh, they, they have their destiny to be destroyed. So the Lord God is taking care of the creation by sending angels with a specific purpose. One of one he went ongoing with 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 the power to conquest forever. So as long as the humanity lives, uh, there is an angel who has the power to continue to conquer the world. So power after power, we so believe that he has the authority to end over to whichever he want, power over power, so the world continues until the end of the time. And the second, we just see directly, he has a power, power to, to take lives on earth and make men slay to one another. When the, lamb, the, when the lamb opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, come. I looked, and there before me was a black horse. Its rider was holding a pair of scales in his hand. Then I heard what sounded like a voice among the four living creatures saying, A quart, a quart of uh, wheat for a day wages, and three quarts of barley for a day wages. Do not damage the oil and the wine. To him was given the economy. They gave this angel the power of uh, the economy. A quart, it's like 15 or 25. If you were 100, 
100 a quart a quarter a quart is like 25 so he had been given uh, the power and he is measuring a quart of a wheat for a day's wages so way back in the days when Moses came the Lord God gave Moses measurements how Jewish uh, Hebrew people were supposed to have the measurement of food or uh, wages in their in their time so if we're not mistaken at that time when moses came it was one wheat barley for wages i mean you have a full measure of 100 for your wages um now the lord make it a quarter like 25 percent of what was supposed to be a wages at this level of life so in other words, famine, uh, the economy is broken and the famine will take place. And he says a three quarters of a barley for day wages, where actually if you read in uh, Levitical and Deuteronomy, you see that all those, the, those books, you see that the barley was coming like uh, it was not even a quarter. It was, it was a bigger measurement. I think it was an N or something. It was a bigger measurement, like a way much larger measurement. But here, the Lord God make it even a, a, a quart, a three quart. That's why he said three quarter. A quarter, like in the good English today, we say a quarter today. Uh, today's writing, we say a quarter of a wheat for a day's wages and a three quarter of a barley for a wages day. Do not damage the oil and the wine. And the God specifically say, do not damage the oil and the wine. So they can still drinking and dancing and do the party and they have the oil. Do not touch that because God deeply knows the heart of man the heart of man regardless of the poverty or something is rejoice is rejoiced by two things the oil and the wine yes man when he has his wine is oh he has his wine when he has his oil oh he has his oil that is where where signs of power uh signs of uh uh uh, stability in the economy was the uh, was the, the oil and and, and, and and the wine today we're talking about gold and stuff like that but way back and then gold remains as being a part of the economy but wine and uh, and oil also was one of the uh, uh, the big measurement and, and for example when Solomon wanted to build the temple he took the other king of Aram Aram Araman and he told him I will send you oil and the barley of wheat of and stuff like that and the deal was made on that kind of stuff when the lamb opened the fourth seal i heard the voice of the four i i heard the voice of the fourth living creature say come i looked and there before me was a pale horse its rider was named death and the hades was following close uh, behind him they were given the power over the fourth over a fourth of the earth to kill by sword, famine, and plague, and by the wild beast of the earth. And I was explaining in the other video, um, in the underworld, a lot of people make a lot of mistakes. We're not going to go to the mythology, the Greek mythology or something, but Hades is one of the entity that works with death. And Hades is like the king of the underworld. And death is is their partner. They both of them. They also have different partners. So to now to make this about God, I'm not making that about anybody else. I make this about God. So they are servant of God. And as they've been conquered by Lord Jesus prior to this mission, they are under service. And their service right now is to go throughout the whole earth, send out famine, plagues. And all, all this stuff that, that have to happen to those who are no believers. When he opened the first seal, I saw under the altar the souls of, of those who had been slain because of the word of God and the testimony they had maintained. They called out in a loud voice, Our long sovereign Lord. Only and true until you judge the inhabitant of the, the earth and avenge our blood. Uh, then each of them was given a little 
a white robe and they were told to wait a little longer until the number of their fellow servant and brothers who were to be killed uh, as they had been was completed. Here also we see, as I promised other people when I was reading uh, my chapter number one, that the tribulation necessarily was not uh, uh, meant for, for the Christians. But chapter number six here, yes, we open uh, a chapter where they say those who will be killed as the servant of the Lord God so to join the holy ones. Um, do, do not mistake about what I'm saying here. Uh, the Lord God always purposed uh, people, souls, according to the work he's doing. He, he purposed a group of people for salvation. He purposed a group of people for his power and his dominion and a lot of things. All we have to care, you and I, is to be believing that the Lord Jesus, the Lamb, who had given us his life, uh, empowers us so that even though this comes down to us as we can be killed uh, for the testimony and the word of God. We will join a group of holies who are actually already waiting for us to come. So the Lord God is showing the afterlife existence that people uh, dead, they are now in such a cells in the subconscious mind they said they don't know what is going to happen. No, those people actually uh, even presented their concern in front of the Lord God say, when are you going to avenge our blood? So those sinners, killers killed us on earth. When are you going to avenge our our blood? And the Lord God uh, will answer them and say, until the people like you who are testifying, who are preaching on earth will be killed or die. I will open in a, I will open a comma here to say that, they, that we have a possibility that those actually, they were in a God and they never really been killed. They're also going to attain that perfection. Why? I'm not making it up. Why? Because I believe that if they're holy in the testimony of God, there is nothing to prevent them from joining the team that were actually waiting until the last of the time i watched as it opened the six seals and there was a great earthquake there was a great earthquake the sun turned black like sackcloth made of goat air. the whole moon turned blood red and the stars in the sky fell to the earth as late to fix the drops from a fig tree when shaken by a strong wind. The sky receded like a scroll rolling up and every mountain and island was removed from its places. Let's go back there. When we open the six seals, there they have an earthquake. And then the Lord God says a lot of stuff. The sun turned into into a red like a yeah black like a sackcloth the the whole moon turned blood red and the stars which um in our reading we believe they are angel of the lord the stars but physical star falls and here in the mystery we also believe that the stars are the angel of god one third uh yeah, they didn't give you the number, but we know that they were swept from the heaven. So um, the stars, the stars in the car in the sky fell to the earth as the late figs drop from a fig tree when shaken by a strong wind. The sky receded like a scroll rolling up, and every mountain and island was removed from its places, and every mountain. An island was removed from its places. Imagine Madagascar disappearing. Imagine all other islands disappearing, removed from their places. Here God is showing us that from the six seals, he's going to do, he's going to manifest his power with no relent. He is going to demonstrate that he is the creator of heaven and earth and nothing will stand in front of him. 
is the alpha and is the omega, the first and the last, and he's going to make all this thing happen. And by the power that he gave to his lamb, which is sons Jesus, that we actually believe in it, so that we we will be spared because God said in John 3:16, so that those who believe in him shall not perish but live the everlasting life. That's why I was saying to you earlier that our death ear won't be a death. Death will be a death to kill you. You pass to the second level. You go live with the Lord your God because you will not even go be, be, be judged. You even won't pass to any testimony. The biggest testimony that you already receive is believing that Jesus is God and Jesus is Lord forever and ever. Then the king of the earth, the princes, the generals, the rich, the mighty, and every slave and every free man hid in caves and among the rocks of the mountains. They called to the mountains and the rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the first of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of their wrath, their wrath has come, and who can stand it? Indeed, that's what I'm saying. Here we are, God is demonstrating Jesus' wrath. The Lord Jesus, the sweet almightyest God, has also a wrath. I mean, he can get angry to the level you have no idea. So that wrath is being demonstrated here. What should you and I do to avoid that kind of wrath? Is simply bear the testimony that Jesus is God and forever, ever remains God. Ladies and gentlemen, here I am explaining you in a plain English. I am not bringing a mystery and trying to bring it to the, the smoky mystery level so that you can see stars shining bright. No, I am just explaining you in a plain English what will take place. Angels will be released and will be sent forth to go uh, accomplish missions. Among those angels, God is mentioning death and Hades, which are partners for a long, 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 long time. They both also will be destroyed together, look like, look like, uh, in a well of, uh, in a well of fire. <laughs> At the end of uh, the, the, the 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 revelation, they both death and Hades will be they will be destroyed for the second death, so that the second death may not take effect on 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 in creation. What happened here? Why is it the Lord God sending all these angels? Because the testimony of the Lord Jesus. Why do I say that? The Lord had been compassionate, he had been kind, he had been open-minded, he had been uh, fair in the, by everything, and he had been uh, giving his word through his apostle. I always say nobody is a sacred, but the word of God himself, God himself and his word are sacred. Only God is sacred. So we are sinner, and the Lord God is a almighty holy. And he had been given us the opportunity from time to time, every day, to repent, to repent, to repent. Ladies and gentlemen, what you do with that message? You feel like it's just some kind of boredom that those priests, they find nothing better to tell us every day than tell us to repent. Yes, we find nothing more important to tell you than repent. Repent of your sins. Yeah, it's easy for me to tell you that. Because guess what? I'm not perfect. But here I am taking the gods of mine to come for 
forward in your most delicate moment, in your most prominent moment, in the most peaceful time of yours to say you repent. And my repentance to you, it's not go roll on the floor, shout out loud. No, I simply want you to acknowledge that the Lamb is Jesus and Jesus is your Lord and Savior. If you can admit that simple fact, then I'll say amen. If you can admit simply to what I just say to you, don't bring me to the picture. I'm just a messenger, some people say. Don't bring me to the picture. I'm just feeling compelled to tell you that so that I can feel also better about myself. You don't know. Maybe I will feel wonderful about myself, but God knows that we are doing this job not because we want to be selfish but because we feel compelled to share with you the good news of the lord yes god wrath is coming god wrath will be upon the earth god wrath will be whipping and really making it very very hard for those who are not listening because if you see the picture here the angel fifth angel the fifth and the third they pretty much received the same thing you see he opened the fifth seal I saw under the altar the souls of those. Okay, that's the fourth seal. I watch up in the sixth seal. There were an earthquake. The sun turned around. Okay, the kings. Okay, uh, I looked there. There were before me a black horse. His rider was holding a pair of seals in his hand. Then I heard the sound, what sounded like a voice among the four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat and a quart uh, for a day wages. And and, and the three quarter or quart of barley for a day wages do not damage the oil and, and, and the wine. And, and, and here they say they were given power over the four, they were given power over the fourth of the earth to kill by sword, famine, plague, and by the wild beast of the earth. The first one had to be given a, a ball. To conquer, which means he has the power to kill. The second one had been given the same thing. But I'm not saying the same thing. Forgive me, say the same thing. But he has been given power to take peace from the earth and to make men slay each other. To him was given a large sword. So... All from the beginning, if we that that's what, that was my idea to condense to condense it to condense it with my idea is that they all had been given a power to kill to kill and destroy and bring wrath wrath angry is a small word I'm angry is a small word. I am in wrath. It means like you, it's like standing in front of a tornado or instead of in front of a wind. A normal breeze wind, it's a breeze wind. But an hurricane or a tornado, an hurricane is an hurricane and a tornado is a tornado. So here we're talking about tornado, hurricane God is coming with all these mites to bring forth justice to those who spent Dead time. Listen to those who are actually complaining here. They say, then the kings of the earth, the princes, the general, the rich, the mighty, and every slave and every free man hid in caves and among the rocks of the mountains. They called to the mountains and the rocks. Fall on us and hide us from the face of whom who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of their wrath has come and who can stand? Kings. We've been passing message to the kings, the presidents of these worlds. We've been passing messages to the queen of the world. We've been passing messages to the princes and the generals and the rich men. 
repent of your sin and do consider that your ways can be guarded by the Lord God Almighty, who is, who was, who is to come. But guess what they did? They spend much time to put mind into their righteousness. They put mind into their mighty work. They overlook at the power of the God. They overlook in the love of loving one another. They overlook at the power of community uh, sake. They overlook into kindness. They overlook into looking after the orphans. They overlook into Paying a tribute to those who are in the needs. When I say pay a tribute, yes. You do not only want to pay a tribute to the rich people. You can also pay a tribute to those who does. You see somebody who has nothing. You you say you're friendly to them. And you try to help out as much as you can. Not thinking too much. What is this sack clove or sketchy? Like this girl say, oh, these sketchy people came in to me. No, why are you treating other people sketchy? Um, forgive me, I'm not using your uh, punchline here to, you know, to offend you, but I'm using it because it's inspiring to hear that somebody's calling other people sketchy. So it's like he sketches them a little bit, you know, or he call them sketchy people. So why are you treating your, your, your friend, your brother sketchy? Why are you not listening to the message of the Lord God? We've been telling you since you were born. When are you going to take guts and courage to listen to the word of God and bless the Lord Almighty King that guarded you all since you were born to today? Yes, uh, it, out of questions, we all going to leave this world. Out of questions, we all going to die. But would you like to spend all hundred years of yours, never thank God even once in your life? Take time, brothers and sisters. Take time. I am not asking you to sit here like me so that you can go through the camera, which is I use my cell phone to talk to you. Because guess what? I believe it's working and I believe it's a good way to reach you up and to tell you that God loves you. If you want the, the wrath of God not fall into you, you need to acknowledge one thing today. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to acknowledge that God is Lord of everything and his love is he has no limits. He's unconditional. You can be stinky with the, with the, with the, with the sin. You can be all blazed, which I don't know what. You can be all tripping with I don't know what. God still loving you. Make sense of what you want. Make sense of what you want to say out. Yes, the Lord God will sustain you because there is no formula. There is nothing that can hold you away from him because everything lies open in front of his eye. He is the almighty God of heaven. He knows everything. Even death is naked in front of him. What can you hide? What can you hide? I am exalting you, brothers. Do not sit on statue. Do not worship idols. They are vain. They cannot even answer you. Take a huge armor and smash the armor uh, on the statue and say, God, I'm doing this for you and I'm requesting a favor. Yes, I want you to do that so that you can put your favor and your smash your statue. See, if the Lord God will not going to help you, then if you smash the idol of your family, if you smash the statue that your grand, 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 uh, grand, grandfather left in your family, I like it, I don't know what, my man, I will be glad to offend you. I say, smash that thing out because it's not going to help you. If you want, put that to the test, the real test. Ask your blind, dumb statue, heal my wounds, heal my blindness, and give me release of what I will going to do. So if you start to answer you, I'm telling you, my brother and sister, you call me. You call me in one four three eight nine two two zero seven one five. One four three eight nine two two zero seven one five.
That is my personal number. You dial that number, say, Brother Douglas, I have a statue here who can actually do miracles. And I'll tell you, regardless of what I'm doing in my life, I'll come down there to witness that because it's never going to happen. It's like um, you asking your own car um, to, to fly for today. But which is not a strongest example I'm going to give because if we work hard, we one day going to end up to make the car fly. It's like you actually making a dead man resurrected from the dead. Dude, that requires a lot of power. It requires attention. That requires uh, presence of the Lord Almighty God for you to do such a thing. So if we are human because we have a limit our limit is death it's like you can resurrect if your statue can resurrect a death oh yeah sure but if my statue cannot resurrect the dead can you resurrect the dead as a human being i'm saying here, i'm not here to do the demonstration for you to can hug a god because a lot of people want you to bring them a way that they can hug a god no i don't have means to give you a way you can hug the Lord, the God, you, I'm giving you the word that we receive from an angel. And I believe that it works. It transforms my life regardless of my mistakes, my weaknesses. But I can tell you when I still go back to stay fast in the Bible, I feel rejuvenated. I feel loved. I feel kind. I feel happier. I feel released from my, my frustration. And a lot of frustrations I've been going through. But the word of God, I am not telling you Come here, see me. I'm a saint. I'm the holy son. No, only that I let I let that to the Lord our, your God. Ladies and gentlemen, you want to avoid the wrath of revelation. You want to avoid the punishment that God is reserving for those who are actually not listening. It's time for you to kneel down, to raise your hand and feel powerful and say, God, thank you for this life. I might not see you today. I might not witness your strength because I have a personal lecture. I want. I have a personal sound and a probes, stuff like that. I have a personal, personal probes and a personal stuff. And I have not. And it had not been alarming to me, so that I can see the God. I have not seen your paranormal work, so that I can say, yeah, it's beeping. Yeah, the Lord God is coming. No, I have not seen that. But what I have seen here is the comfort that I'm getting close when I read your Bible. And those are your word. If is that true and help me to go through this journey using your word as a word to sanctify my soul, my spirits, my life so that I can be a better person tomorrow. And the Lord God will answer you. I promise and I guarantee you he is going to answer you. Yes, because you are taking a greatest testimony is the lamb. Ladies and gentlemen, I insist and I insist I will continue to insist. There are no great mystery in this world than the resurrection of Christ. There are no big story, biggest adventure or something you never heard of that it's more than the the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. Only the Lord Jesus did it. Resurrect himself. What I say himself, I say a dead man who resurrected without nobody praying for him. Because other people that got resurrected, like Lazarus, like other people, but someone prayed for them to be resurrected. But the Lord Jesus, nobody went there to pray for him, God managed and put the whole script down so that when time comes for him to resurrect it, he was touched and he was brought back to life more powerful than ever. How wonderful is that? Yes, the testimony of the lamb that he had been slain, he was killed for us a receive of power, dominion, strength forever and ever. So that tomorrow may be a wonderful day for you. Wake up tomorrow in the morning and look at the sky. And in the evening, look at the moon and the sky and the stars. Ask yourself questions. I know I will pass. 
I know I may resist. I may have a healthy diet, uh, keto, keto diet, custom keto. Uh, you bring all this food and sushi and all these diets you can do. Ladies and gentlemen, final line is death. Here, Hades and death had been even put into mission. Let me tell you the mission that death received. And when the lamb opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature say, Come, I looked, and there were before me a pale horse. Its rider, its rider was named Death, and Hades was following close behind him. They were given power over the fourth of the, the earth to kill by sword, famine, and plague, and by the wild beasts of the earth. Here, if you could have avoided the death, but I'm giving you a sad news. He had been given authority to run after you, buddy. And he's going to run after you until he completes his mission. So you want to avoid him, ladies and gentlemen, my friend? <laughs> 